Hey y'all. So it's been broken and, um, the heading in, in my Bible, uh, what well, my study Bible, the Thompson one that was such a beautiful gift. It says, what joy shall be in the midst of affliction because of the birth and kingdom of Christ. Now, we live in a fallen world, right? So that's affliction. We live in a fallen world. But what joy there shall be in the midst of living in this fallen world. Because we do not bear the burden any longer. And the rod of the oppressor, the burden, the yoke of the burden, and the staff for my shoulders have been broken. Satan, I am not your slave any longer. I'm not your servant any longer. You don't own me any longer. My debt has been paid and I'm leaving these chains right here. Oh, that is so good. But he says that it's been broken as in the days of Gideon with Midian. And so you can read that um, account in Judges chapter 6. I'm only going to read um, a couple of verses, but let's see. 6. So, um, the hand of Midian, it's in Judges 6, the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Uh, because of Midian, the Israelites made themselves dens, which are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. Listen to what, this is what Midian would do. The Midianites. Whenever Israel had sown their seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the crops as far as Gaza and leave no nourishment for Israel and no ox or sheep or donkey. For they came up with their cattle in their tents and they came like locusts in a multitude. For both they and their camels could not be counted. So they wasted the land as they entered it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the Israelites cried to the Lord. They were absolutely at the, you know, the mercy, which the Midianites had none, of the Midianites and the Amalekites. And so when Israel would sow their seed, the enemy would come in and wipe it out, utter destruction. I think it's um, interesting wording that they said they came in like locusts, which, you know, locusts are destructive, um, like a multitude. They and their camels could not be counted, so they wasted the land. Um, I know the past couple of years have just been oh, really, really hard. They've been tough. And if you, if you do not have a firm faith, if you do not fully trust in Jesus Christ, you can feel absolutely alone, hopeless, devastated, destitute. There's just no way out. Why even keep breathing? Um, and, and I can see that similarity here that there are a multitude of so many that can't be counted. Have you ever felt like there was just so much heavy that you just can't even count them all? And <laughs> we talked about this last Sunday that, you know, impossible is impossible. It cannot be, if it's impossible, it cannot be more impossible than impossible. Impossible by definition is not possible. So if it's not possible, it can't be not possible and then something else be really not possible. So the impossibility of the circumstance is irrelevant <laughs> where the word of God is concerned. And um, the number of enemy is also irrelevant where the word of God is concerned. And so the Israelites hid themselves in caves. They destroyed, the Midianites destroyed the crops and the lands like locusts. Um, they wasted the land as they entered into it. They just trampled over it all. They would leave no nourishment. So key words in this one were impoverished, destroyed, wasted the land, and no nourishment. But we all know what happened. So Gideon takes the men and the Lord dwindles down his numbers and his numbers and his numbers. So he's left with 300 men, right, to battle against 
an army that cannot be counted. <laughs> and so the Lord tells them what to do. And Gideon heard them tell the dream. This is in Judges 7. And 19. So Gideon and the 100 men who were with him, he had divided them into three, three groups, um, came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And when the guards had just been changed and they blew the trumpets and smashed the pitchers that were in their hands, and the three companies blew the trumpets and shattered the pitchers, holding the torches in their left hands and in their right hands the trumpets to blow, leaving no chance to use swords. I think that is absolutely huge. So these men, 300 men, go into battle against numerous, right? So many they cannot be numbered. And they have their trumpets in one hand and the torches in the other. So they... Their hands are full, <laughs> and there's no way for them to use a sword. Now, that's trust. That is trust. And the three companies um, blew the trumpets and shattered the pitchers, holding the torches in the air. And they cried, The sword for the Lord and Gideon. They stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the Midianite army ran. They cried out and fled. And when Gideon's men blew 300 trumpets, the Lord set every Midianite sword against his comrade and against all the army, and they fled. And they fled. And the men of Israel were called together out of Naphtali and Asher and all Manasseh, and they pursued Midian. So in the same way that the Lord broke the yoke of the burden and the rod and staff of the oppressors for Gideon over Midian, he has done the same for you and me. We'll pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.